All right, so as a, another carryover from the last question, uh, this question wants to know, if a magnetic dipole levitating above an infinite superconducting plane is free to rotate, what orientation is it to adopt, and how high above the surface will it float? Okay, we've seen this back in Chapter 4 when we dealt with polarization, too. All right, so let's go ahead and draw it out. What we're assuming that is that, again, if we're on the z-axis with the dipoles, we have plus down, the uh, minus signs facing each other. Again, we established that last question. The plus signs facing out in space, where sigma or theta is equal to the angle to the z-axis. Again, separated by distance h uh, to the xy plane. Again, if we fold this over the x-axis, we see we have an image, the mirror image, so hence image. All right, anyways. So let's go ahead and start with uh, defining everything that we want. So for the solution, let's say that the angle between the dipole M1 and the z-axis is theta. Again, that was drawn. Then the image dipole M sub 2, uh, the field of that dipole uh, for points on the z-axis will create a torque onto M1. Again, the field's going to be pointing up and then trying to push around M2 or M1. And so we know that uh, the torque is equal to M cross B dipole, okay? And uh, so what we're trying to say here is that uh, the B dipole comes from M2 that's pushing on the torque or the pushing on M1, and that's what's creating the torque. And the torque's going to tell it to rotate. So again, if we use the coordinate-free form, what we see here is that we're taking M1 cross all these things. Um, <clears throat> now the cross product can be pushed inside the little brackets here, um, simply because mu over four pi, one plus h plus z cubed is all equal to is all a constant has no vector direction. Note that m two dot z hat is a the dot product makes it a scalar, so we're only taking the cross product to m one with the z hat and the m one with the m two, okay? And that's what we see in the parentheses there. That's why it worked that way. All right, so again, this is evaluated at z equals h because, again, we're at the same distance above and below. The image charge is symmetric. But m1 here is equal to m sine theta, zero in the uh, y direction and cosine in the z direction, all right? And m2 is the same thing, except now we're negative cosine, all right? Let the trig do the work for you. We're pointing right. But M2 is pointing down, M1 is pointing up, <clears throat> okay? So with that, when we're trying to take the cross product to M1 with Z, what we see is that we get um, the sine, or the X component, since Y cancels everything out and Z can't be applied. And so for that cross product, we get negative M sine theta Y at. And then for M1 cross M2, we get negative 2M squared sine cosine in the y hat direction very convenient okay which is what we expect you know so here uh you see that we get a um let's see okay so the left hand side of that we have a three factor and the right hand side we have a two factor but both have m squared so we can factor that out both have a sine and a cosine so we can factor them out and after the factoring you see we have mu naught m squared over 4 pi times 2h cubed sine theta cosine theta 3 y hat minus 2 y hat again 3 minus 2 gets to 1 and that's why we had or that's we found the torque to be um mu naught m squared over 4 pi 2h cubed sine theta cosine theta y hat okay we're leaving the uh 2 and the h together instead of making that an 8h cubed simply because we have to solve for h next so, what this tells us is that the torque is zero whenever sine or cosine are zero. Hence, theta equals zero, pi over two, and pi. Okay, sine equals zero at zero and pi, and then theta equals, or cosine theta equals zero at pi over two. All right, the reason that we have to use a little bit of induction, or, you know, you know, kind of scope it out is that the physics tells us that uh, theta equals zero and pi are unstable because the nearby ends of the dipole, you know, minus in the diagram, dominate and they repel. And so what that's going to do is tell us that they're going to want to push each other into a stable configure. They're going to want to flip their sides. 
So a stable configuration is at um, pi over two or parallel to the surface. Um, I've read somewhere that they, you know, this is like saying that a pencil can stand on its tip. Technically it can, but it's very difficult to maintain that. So it's just not likely. Um, but parallel to the surface, if we were to lay a pencil on its side, it would do that. And that's what we're trying to get at here. If it were free to rotate, that is. All right, so it's definitely the more stable solution, and that's the one we go with. Um, now, in this orientation, the force on M1 is F is equal to uh, the del operator, or the gradient of M1 dot B2, where B2 is the field from M2. Um, so go ahead and chug all that stuff along, and we see here that um, we move along. Now we're just in the x direction because pi over 2 was determined. And so uh, go ahead and move that along. You see that the dot product is pretty easy to deal with. You get negative mu, not m, 4 pi, m squared over 4 pi. Again, this is happening at z equal h since it's an image charge. So that's why we end up with uh, h plus z uh, cubed on the inside, but we cannot evaluate it until we take the gradient. All right, so now taking the gradient, what we see here is that um, we end up with uh, something in the z direction since that's the only derivative that responds. If you remember, gradient is equal to x, y, and z partials. And so if we do that, then we just take the partial of this denominator, we get a factor of negative three, and that negative cancels with the negative from B2. And thus we're left with three mu naught m squared over four pi. Uh, again, now you see how we have h plus h again after we evaluate z at h. Again, just be careful that we found that m1 and b2 were pointing in the x direction due to the stability factor, but the force is acting in the z direction, okay? Um, so again, we see that factor of uh, 2h to the fourth, and at equilibrium, the force upward is balanced by the weight. And so we see here that we have 3 mu uh, m squared over 4 pi 2 h cubed is equal to mg. Solve this for h. Um, we have a factor of 1 half. Again, outside. And, oh, that's supposed to be a 4. Excuse me. Uh, that's supposed to be a uh, parentheses 2h to the 4th. Okay, but regardless, you still end up with one factor outside. 3 mu naught over uh, m squared over 4 pi mg to the 1 fourth. Um, but if we contrast this with the last question, what we see is that we have a 4 in the denominator instead of a 2. And so that's a factor of 1 half uh, to the 1 fourth, because if we multiply the last one by uh, 2 in the denominator, it'd be the same as 1 half to the 1 fourth power. Um, which numerically uh, or decimally is represented by 0 0.84. And uh, this is 0 0.84 times the height it would be to adopt in the perpendicular orientation as seen last question. So we suffer a little bit of height, but we get more stability. And so that's the trade-off.